So welcome everyone to the Art Pluriverse. Uh, we would like to uh, welcome today uh, Mateus Luna. He is part of uh, the Tanakan um, uh, community. Uh, he is um, a developer, a front-end developer, and he's one of the driving forces of uh, the Tanakan, which is a content management system that we will be using for uh, creating our community archives. So uh, Mateus, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mariana. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, really like uh, when Dalto told me about the opportunity and we were able to hear what, I mean, the ideas that you have for the workshop and everything, I felt like a strong connection between the things that we expect for Tainakun and the things that you were looking for. And hopefully by the end of the workshop, we will all have, you know, exchanged ideas and experiences that are really good for everyone. So I'm going to start uh, sharing my screen. Again, you guys can just tell me if you were able to see. Is that, is that okay? Can you can you see? It? Um, well, I have a document, a Google Docs document that I created where I think I have the basically all the links that should matter for this workshop, I, I put it here. Uh, some of them we're not even using today, maybe some of them tomorrow, uh, but basically you have the presentation that I'm going to use soon here. Um, the link for the col Tainacan collections in the Bionel uh, of the Western Bank, uh, Balkans website. And yeah, the rest of them will be covering in the future. Uh, so let's let's start this. Uh, well, at first, my name is Mateus, as Mariana said, Mateus Machado Luna. Um, I am a computer scientist and work mainly as a front-end developer for the Tainacan project. The Tainacan project was actually created by Professor Dalto Martins, which sadly could not be here to, today with us. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, that's all you need to know about me. And I wanted actually to take a minute just to hear from you guys and just to, I mean, I, I, I can see some of your names, but I also would like to hear about your expectations. Uh, what are you expecting to learn in the workshop and what do you seek in for today's class? So if you wanna take a minute and open your microphones, no rush. <laughs> One at a time. Hi. Hi, it's Dimitra. Should I start? <laughs> Hi, Mateus and the, and the team, and thank you. Um, I'm really looking forward. I, I use WordPress uh, also for my personal website, and I... Yeah, I expect that I will be more, much more able to, you know, to expand all the the, the, the tools that are available there. Um, I work as a as a curator and a cultural manager. I'm based in Athens, in Greece, and uh, with my one hat, let's say I I am a co-founder at an uh, art organization that designs programs for. Um, people with serious illnesses, participatory practices, main, uh, artistic practices mainly. And with my other hat, which is uh, more relevant to this, um, uh, to this year's um, pluriverse uh, subject, um, I'm interested in the rural spaces, places. So uh, along with a, a team of collaborators, artists mainly, we, we have initiated a project in Samothraki. It's, it's, a, it's a remote island in Northern Aegean and uh, since 2019. And, and there we explore um, critical uh, artistic practices, which we, we want to involve as much as we can the local community. We're not based there, but we spend, uh, we try to spend two or three months uh, every year. So. Uh, we will continue this project this uh, summer too. And yeah, looking forward to, to today's uh, course. Thank you. Thank you. Next one. Shall I go next? <laughs> <laughs> 
your friend again. <laughs> okay, so I'm Jelena from uh, Croatia. Uh, I'm uh, from the uh, island of Hvar, that's on the south of uh, Croatia. I'm working as a producer and a curator. And uh, lots of uh, my work is dedicated to some uh, problems and themes uh, that come from the community of the island and the islanders. Uh, and um, I'm here to, so you can tell us more how to document and how to put in digital all the things that we are learning with our communities and together with the artists here on this um, biennial program. So that's it. Thank you, Valena. Next one. May I? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I am Dimitris. Um, nice to meet you. Through I'm glad I changed your name because I was like green, green what? <laughs> okay, Dimitris. <laughs> green Dimitris. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm an agricultural scientist. Um, I have uh, completed a master program in agroecology and organic agriculture, and I've applied uh, research in ethnobotany. I've worked with local communities of Limnos Island here in Greece, and more specific with local knowledge on uh, wild harvesting medicinal plants. Um, I've also assisted a project in Samothraki. Maybe Dimitra knows about it. It's about um, sustainable approaches on, um, let's say, improving the quality of uh, locals on the, on the island. I was there in 2018. And I think it will be a very interesting workshop because it's, it's very useful to know, other than just documenting what we're doing, knowledge, to somehow organize it and archive it in a place where it can be maybe easier um, compare with other projects and other research approaches from different multiple disciplines. So I'm, I'm also looking forward to your uh, insights. Thank you. Great, thank you, Dean. It's on you, Katerina, go ahead. <laughs> Should we also say something? I don't know. As part of the uh, team, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, organizers, of course. I mean, <laughs> go ahead. Okay. So let's say that we're more than happy to have you with us. We're quite inspired from uh, the preliminary work that has been done in order to prepare the ground for today's workshop. So um, having quite basic, I would call them, um, skills in terms of working with um, uh, WordPress. I'm quite looking forward for today to be more familiar and then uh, um, it, it will be something that certainly will facilitate uh, the overall program, but then again, also the purpose of uh, today's uh, work so for creating the archives. All right, I just realized that Catherine was part of the team because I thought it was only Mariana and Adi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> in any case, no, now I think Mariana and Eddie will have to present ourselves as well so we can <laughs> make justice for everyone. Uh, maybe we should give a um, priority also to uh, Veronique. Thank she you. just joined yeah. uh, the call. Uh, so maybe she can um, introduce herself a bit and say maybe what's your connection with... Uh, WordPress or, um, I don't know, Veronique, can you hear us? I think she has her mic off. No problem, oh, Veronique. Mm. Let's take your time. Trouble, okay. <laughs> Yeah. 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 No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I think this uh, part for us using uh, connecting uh, archiving and uh, WordPress uh, would be of uh, great value since we have been trying, as you know, 
uh, to create this uh, community archives through uh, Art Blue Rivers uh, digital program. And uh, we were trying to find uh, an easy way, an accessible way to be able to um, communicate this information, to do the right documentation, and also for this to be um, to have a ent uh, friendly interface, uh, both uh, for us as users and for the people we invite to do this uh, sort of work here. So uh, we, it was uh, wonderful coming across uh, Tainakan and we are looking forward to <laughs> integrating everything. <laughs> um, I would uh, second uh, Ellie and uh, thank you, Mateus, uh, for this um, opportunity to learn better at Tainakan. I would say that uh, it was great to find out that there is an integration system uh, that we could use within the WordPress site, um, not going away from um, this layout and uh, um, providing this way a, a user experience that is uh, unified across uh, the different um, repositories and websites. So um, I think that uh, finding a Tainakan, which is a content management system for the WordPress, um was really uh, a gem and um, yeah we're looking forward to work with it and we are happy that um, we can do this uh, initiating the digital community archives of the local communities of uh, the balkan region who are part of uh, the project of this year's art rivers mm. and if uh, veroniki uh, you uh, feel comfortable and you Yes. Um, sorry, I, I missed the part of the presentation, so I actually don't know. I will follow and catch up with uh, the recorded uh, presentation. Uh, That's okay. I have we a lot just of like, questions. Yeah. We were just introducing ourselves. I have, a, I have a lot of questions about uh, the archives, and um, but I don't know if now is the time to to ask the questions or wait for uh, tomorrow's seminar. Uh, on the end of tomorrow seminar. Well, perfect. This is this is exactly like opportunity to go to this next slide because we can discuss a bit of how uh, we're planning on doing things here. The idea is that um, today we'll have a course introduction and discuss a bit of what is Tainakan, why we made it, and how we did it, etc. And then we'll probably be diving to the administrative interface, the administrative panel of Tainakan to create some simple collections, uh, create a bit of metadata items, configure filters and stuff like that. Um, I, uh, the following day, we'll probably still have a lot of things to cover. So we'll try to solve some doubts, some things that are not clear. And then we'll discuss mainly uh, about the integration between the plugin and WordPress and how we can use it to expose our items to the public. Because all of the work that we will do today will be in the administrative panel, but tomorrow we will see how to, you know, put this archive actually online to, in the public to everyone to see it. And for that, we'll probably mention a bit of the issue of theme compatibilities. Uh, we'll discuss the content editors that WordPress has. There is Gutenberg editor, but you also use a plugin, the WP Bakery page builder. And I, I check a bit, there is a bit of things that we also can do with it using Tynacon content. And finally, um, I mean, we have two days and a couple less than two hours to discuss everything here. And I'm 100% sure that we will not be able to cover everything and that uh, by the end of the day, you have a lot of other questions and things in mind. So please be patient and uh, be aware that uh, this is not a final conversation. Not only we are recording this and we have time to, you know, raise questions and everything, but at the end of the day, I mean, we, we are just covering uh, topics that are, that I consider that are relevant. And I'll say a lot of things probably maybe a bit quickly. So if, you, if it's not clear, please just raise your, raise your hands and tell me because even my, sometimes as I, as I, as I was saying uh, earlier, this is my first time I'm doing this in English. So it's even a bit more complicated. Uh, 
Um, so if, if anything is not clear, you can just, you know, uh, raise a ca any question, that's all right. And once we are done, uh, what I keep saying is that the idea is not that this is a, a course that, you know, you go out of here knowing how to create digital repositories. You will learn a lot of things, obviously, but during the process, there is a lot of experimentation. There is a lot of uh, putting your hands dirty. You know, you have to actually work with it to start getting ideas and to start raising more questions. And if we don't have time to do that, you can be sure that we have spaces to dis discuss this. Uh, this logo here is actually uh, the logo of Discourse, which is a software that we use for our discussion forum. And that's where the Tainakan community is hosted and basically where you are free to raise questions and bring any doubts, anything that you uh, feel that in the future while working with it, uh, if you need ideas, if you need to, you know, maybe you find some bug, maybe you, you have some issue, you can just go there and ask us and we will we'll more than pleased to, to have you there, right? So, um, first of all, what is exactly Tainacan? What does Tainacan mean? This is not a Brazilian Portuguese uh, word. Actually, Tainacan comes from uh, Brazilian indigenous, what we call the, our native people, right? Our native uh, culture people, and is particularly the tribe of Carajás. They have this legend about a star that they name as Tainakan in their pronounce as Taikinahi. Um, and it's basically it's it's Venus. It's the the planet Venus, which is the star, the first stars that shines at the night. It is a you know a, a simple analogy of uh, bringing information, bringing light. So the universe and connections and <laughs> you got the idea right that's kind of the inspiration behind the logo and the expression and we uh, it was chosen to go that way especially because the first uh, museum that we worked together with with was the uh, museo do Indio, which is a museum that held a lot of uh, material from indigenous from brazilian indigenous um but uh Apart from philosophy, Tainaka is particularly a research project. And the project began in 2014. It was uh, back then part of the Brazilian policy for national digital archives of the existing country of culture. I say existing because our awful president just, you know, destroyed it in the last years. We actually don't have one Ministry of Culture anymore, sadly. But uh, back then, that's how we started. We, there were a few uh, researchers and Professor Dalto Martins was one of them that were interested in analyzing what are the resources, what are the features that are necessary for uh, the building of digital archives in our cultural institutions, in particularly for museums back then. Uh, so after some, some investigation and some papers published, they kind of get to the feeling that we don't have yet an appropriate tool for this in Brazil. And I will discuss why in the next slide. Uh, so basically this research project continues until today. Uh, our laboratory is now held inside of the Federal University of Brasilia. And we have around 15 people working actually <laughs> It's just two developers, me and my friend, and you know other people that are more focused on research and theory, especially people from the area of uh, information science, uh, data gathering, and museology. So what did they want uh, with this research project? They wanted to find solutions that would help uh, offer to these institutions, these cultural institutions, alternative to basically do this stuff. They wanted to be able to reuse digital objects to perform advanced search with qualified metadata and descriptions to be able to obviously preserve some of this information. And I think one of the main uh, aspects to be able to expose it to the public, to not keep it held in just inside the institutions, but to spread it actually to a, a greater audience. And the greatest challenge 
was to find a make to allow these operations to be efficient and sustainable. Sustainable particularly because in the, in, in the reality of Brazilian institutions, especially cultural institutions, there is really low budget for um, information technology services. So just to give a hint, there are some museums that don't even have a server available. They, they don't even have like a computer for uh, having their digital material scanned and, and everything. And besides that, many of them, when, when we talk about having, uh, how, how do I say? Um, for, for when we talk about having their material, their items in a digital version, the only uh, way that they had to document this was basically some spreadsheet like Excel. So some of the teams were able to find uh, solutions online or more efficient solutions and go more professional. And for that, we have things like Omeka, DSpace, Islandora, Atom, which are really good softwares and that have a lot of history in the area of documentation. But particularly, they tend to require um, a complicated uh, requirements, complicated requirements for development and for uh, technology. So you would need a, a, a web server. You would need a developer that has some ex, uh, high skills, for example, in Java, in the case of Omeka, and, and I think they space is Java as well. And configuration, installation, setup tend to use tend to be complicated. And even then, when they were able to achieve that, uh, so keep that going on after the years, receiving updates and everything tend to get complicated. And those are only the open options that we can mention, but they are obviously paid options, which tend to be expensive. And many times the institutions would not have the guarantee that you know they're hosting their material, their data in a server, which is uh, not in their control. And it's a kind of a matter of having uh, possession, having right of usage on your own data. And that's the challenge here. We need something that can be sustainable in this kind of market share. And that's kind of where WordPress uh, appeared as, a, as a, an interesting solution for us particularly because it is a truly open source project. It is uh, really interesting to be, uh, to see how it, uh, it has been growing in the last years with many uh, contributions from the community. Uh, last, last version, for example, released a couple of weeks ago, had more than 600 contributors that were not paid to actually uh, hold the software. You know, there's a lot of things uh, that make WordPress uh, one of the greatest projects of content management system today. And these are some statistics, statistics that they used to, you know, be proud a lot of. And that's actually true. You know, 42.5% uh, of all content management, management systems, websites are running WordPress today. And this is uh, a lot uh, to, to be told in terms of internet websites. But WordPress obviously uh, is focused on creating blocks. The main purpose of WordPress is to create blocks. But they have a really uh, nice uh, ecosystem, a really nice um, community that decided to open up the functionalities of WordPress via plugins. The idea is that anyone can write a plugin to extend the functionality of WordPress um, and also anyone can write a team to change the appearance of the websites that will be seen for WordPress. And particularly the plugins uh, have the power to make WordPress a totally different thing. So just to catch up an example, uh, one of the most famous plugins for WordPress is WooCommerce. And what WooCommerce does is take the block system of WordPress and make it an e-commerce. So you can have product pages and those filters where you go and search for products. And then you have a, you know what, uh, payment system, et cetera, et cetera. And the idea for Tanakan, it's kind of this, 
but we want to do it for uh, digital archives, basically, digital archives and repository, and particularly taking advantage of everything that WordPress already has uh, in terms of digital exposition, in terms of contribution, and the maintainability of the system, which has been used worldwide. So this was really positive for the research uh, because we knew that it's hard to find a developer in Brazil for um, a specific digital system, a digital content management system, such as uh, Omeka, DSpace, and etc. But it is really easy to find WordPress developers. They are in the market everywhere. And in the end, we would need just to adapt some things. So this, this is why we took that path, more or less. And this is where we are right now. Uh, Tainakan today is a WordPress plugin, an official one. You can find it in the repository of WordPress and you can install it by clicking just one button in the, in the administrative panel of WordPress. We also have a few plugins that are for Tainakan that are also hosted. And the idea is that if someone needs a feature that probably it's not necessarily for everyone, but should be useful for some people, we create a plugin and that plugin may be or not activated by the users. But Tainakan uh, is also a team. Uh, we have an official quote unquote, official team, uh, Tainaka interface, which is kind of our basic solution for, if you, if you don't have a developer that makes a team for you or, if you, or if you're not able to buy a nice team or build one, we have this team, which we kind of keep it and every feature that we add in the plugin, we make sure to work properly on this team. Uh, there is also a plugin that allows the integration with a famous team called Bloxy. And the idea, I, as I was telling Mariana in the future, is that probably this integration with things will be something easier than what it is today. I, end up, I ended up making a small plugin for the BNL of Western Balkans. Um, and I'll discuss a bit more on why we need to do this uh, tomorrow when we talk about this. So you may find Tanakan probably uh, via the official website as well. We have uh, tanakan.org, which is where we have our blog. And mainly is, this is where we have news like um, every new release, new features, some events. Um, well, it's, it's kind of the, the door for uh, all the information that matter for us. Uh, we have a wiki, which is, the, where we host our documentation, basically. This documentation is primarily in Brazilian Portuguese and English. There are some pages that are not translated yet. And in these pages, we always have a link uh, that you can click and edit it on GitHub. So it's an open document for everyone who wants to give contributions. We last year had one girl from Germany who actually translated a lot of the pages to, to English, which was really nice. Uh, so it's an ongoing project uh, that certainly needs improvements, but many of the things that we'll cover here today, you'll be able to also find that in the, in the documentation of the wiki. And finally, uh, we have the discourse forum, which is the place that I told you that you can find me there and you know just raise questions, uh, ask me, if you are how to do something or tell me if you're having any problems, that's really the, it's, it's my favorite place of this tour because it's the spot where we are able to connect with each other and exchange ideas and this stuff. So what do you want to do with Tainakan? There are some concepts and I've used even some icons here that are the same icons that we have in the interface just so we can get familiarized, uh, familiarized, I'm not sure if that word exists, uh, just so we can start to get used to the concepts that we hear a lot from here, okay? So it's uh, a management system where we will we'll have process and activities, we'll have user and permission settings, and we'll also be able to generate reports. Hopefully by the end of the today, or maybe tomorrow, I'll show you how these reports work. It's a new feature. But the main, the heart of uh, Tainakan 
uh, repository is the collections. There are the collections. So a Time Account repository has a list of collections. And a collection is basically, you can think of it as a holder for content. And this holder, um, it's kind of a box where you put all your digital files, all right? But they have a really, really important uh, role, which is to define what is your item, okay? So a digital object is an item and a collection contains a list of items. But what makes one item exist in one collection and not in the other is the very fact that at that item is described by the same metadata that uh, this collection has. So if you have a collection of albums, I'm saying musical albums, those albums, they will have metadata such as uh, title, author, uh, producer, uh, release year, something like that, okay? So this makes this item an album. And the fact that it has this metadata makes it belong to the collection albums. I may have another collection such as books, and then this collection also have a title, an auto, and probably a publishing date, a number of pages, and something like that. So the fact that the fact that those metadata are different is what justifies uh, an item belonging to one collection or another. Okay. Um, so again, collections are a group of items, which is the digital object itself. And look, the item has metadata, which are attributes of it, but itself is something. And it is probably a digital file, such as an image. It can be an audio file. It can be a, a PDF. It really depends on how you organize your data. And sometimes it is even a link. Um, for example, YouTube video can be an item and we can have metadata around it. Uh, the metadata, as I said, are the attributes of the item, and that's mainly your documentation. It's the heart of... Uh, it, this is where we, we justify mainly not only creating, you know, post pages for your items in WordPress, which is something that you could do probably, but you wouldn't have... Uh, qualified descriptors that would say, hey, this part of the post, this is the description. This part is the author section. This other one is the creation date, for example. So metadata are an organizing, uh, organizing way uh, of the performing your documentation properly, okay? And once we have metadata sets, we can take the advantage of this organization uh, organization to create filters and basically make multiple types of search interfaces that will enable people to uh, view your collection under different facets. Uh, facets is, is a term that sometimes we use and I'm not sure if it's completely clear, but it's basically the idea that if you look at a collection without filtering, you are looking at raw data. If you apply a filter, you are looking at a facet of that data. It's, it's like using uh, a perspective, uh, a nature of that data that it's different from the raw, it's different from the, from the whole, you know? Um, and a great way of, of creating nice research and, per, sorry, nice search strategies is by using taxonomies, which are uh, a method for classification. And you, you may hear the terms as such terms as vocabulary, categories, those are basically the taxonomies. And, and we'll cover them soon as well. And you may also want to establish relationships uh, between the items. And those can be relationships inside a collection or maybe relationships outside of a collection. For example, if I have the album collection that I just mentioned, it, I can have uh, authors or band collections where I would link uh, the singer, the artist to the object and vice versa, okay? And finally, the, the end goal of all this work is to have exhibitions, to have digital expositions. And a particularly one thing that I like to say uh, that is a narrative creation, which is to not only show 
to the user, you know, a raw list of items, but also tell him uh, stories, tell him stuff about this data. You're not only creating data organized, but you are also able to show uh, through this data information in the end. I mean, things that matter for your community, things that matter in your context. Uh, this, so that's it for the slides. Uh, in this last slide, I have a list of uh, some existing links that are using Tanaka. Um, I'm not gonna open them here because I think it would take too much time to cover uh, the details, but some that I just would like to mention a bit. We are really, really, really proud to start getting these international partnerships. And we already have one, actually one website that is in Greek. And I showed that to Mariano in our last conversation, right? And the guy that did this uh, was a really, really great contributor to the project because he not only created this site and used the plugin, but he also helped translate in China into Greek. So now Greek and Spanish and English and Portuguese are the, the languages available officially for Tanaka. And um, if anyone wants to add any other language there, like, uh, I would be really happy. Um, we have our first uh, Mexican contributions. Uh, the Museo Nacional de la Estampa is the first one, but there are actually other three under development right now. And I'm really excited for, the, excited for them because they have amazing collections and uh, really nice projects. We have a small one from Chile, this one, the Cartografia Digital. And from Brazil, there are some that I would like to mention. Nowadays, we have around 600 institutions, institutions not, but uh, open um, websites that are running that we are aware of. But some that I like to mention, this one is a really important digital um, electronic art event that is going to be held next this year, actually, and they are using Tanakam. Um, Atlas de, da Literatura Digital Brasileira is uh, one focused on digital literacy. It's really nice as well, the project, uh, really good folks. This one here is just one of the many links inside a bigger project, which is really, uh, it's the kind of thing that we have ongoing for research is the idea that uh, we have different museums from Brazil that use Tanaka, okay? And some of these museums agreed on working with a metadata standard. So they have the same uh, descriptors for every data. And because of that, we were able to build a website, which is, uh, uh, you, when you go inside it, you can search in all of the museums. But the, the nicest thing of it is because we're not uh, asking the museums to uh, send to us our, uh, their digital files or their metadata um, and, and host it in our servers. You know, we're not, we don't, we don't want to take control of their data. We're just showing a place where everyone can look on their data searching actually through an aggregator, what we call an aggregator. And that's something kind of like what Europeana does, except that Europeana is huge and it's a much more mature project. But this is really the first time we were able to get something like that for Brazil. Um, I have one nice museum here with some photos that I like. Uh, Peruspedia, this is a really nice project uh, from a small community. Um, it, it, it's a neighborhood. I think I can call it like that. It's a neighborhood that have a long history uh, of fights and um, injustice that were told uh, in books. And they decided to put this in, uh, in their digital archives. They have maps, they have photographies, they have really interesting documentation of all their, um, all their processes, their historical fights for better conditions. And this is the Centro de Memoria Queixada. So it's a really different one, like uh, even aesthetically, but it's a nice project. Uh, Museu das Coisas Banais, uh, we could translate it like um, Museum of the Useless Stuff. <laughs> it's a project that someone made uh, for things that are um, 
probably useless, but have some sentimental uh, memory for whoever has it. For example, I have like a, a toy here that my dog destroyed yesterday and pissed with him. But this, this would be the kind of thing that you find in this museum because they uh, have a, uh, an open submission system where everyone can go there, upload their pictures and tell their story. Hey, this was uh, my doll that I had, whatever, whatever. Uh, this is a piece of, I don't know, a can of a bottle that I found and it, it reminds me of something, etc. It's a really interesting project um, and has a lot of do with the finology of, you know, um, open access that we like to discuss. And finally, this last one is a website from a friend of mine that is a, a, a biologist. And uh, I figured out that maybe some of you may have interest in it. I'm not, I'm not sure because it, it, it discusses a lot of things of botanic and this stuff, but I'm not sure. Okay, just, just putting a link there and later you can take a look if you want. All right, uh, so I said a lot of things, but I didn't show anything. So let's, let's start, let's, let's do it. Um, this is the, uh, once you are logged in in the website, you will see this bar here on the top, direct you to the WordPress administrative panel, all right? And I'm going. I'm clicking here and I'm just going to access it. So this is the first page that you see whenever you log in. Uh, may, you may see a bit less uh, of options uh, according to your permission. Actually, I should ask, uh, I'm not sure if everyone is logged in, but no, forget about it. Uh, we will we'll do, for now, I will just be explaining things a bit and later you will have to log in and and I will leave a moment for you to play with, but let's take a moment just for, of, for explanation uh, to start. Tomorrow, uh, we'll be visiting um, the, some of the pages here, which are related to WordPress, but today we'll be mainly focused on this link here, which is the Tynacom plugin administrative panel. So you can go there and click and you'll probably find the home page for it. Uh, one quick suggestion, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be clicking in a lot of places and you, you're probably going to be worried to do it yourself like and click it there. Like um, You have a moment for that and I, I suggest you to try to follow now here and later we can go through it because it's really a lot of things. Uh, here you have a bit of the concepts that you, I mentioned it early, all right? One thing that you should know up front is that there are some things that are in uh, darker blue, okay? And others that are in light blue, uh, turquoise, cyan, I don't know what, how to name this color, all right? The, the dark blue uh, are concepts that are uh, valid for the whole repository. So every collection probably will be affected by those things. This means that we have metadata that belong so every, uh, to every collection, we'll have filters that belong to every collection. We'll discuss later the taxonomies, which will uh, be usable for every collection. And we are things that are dedicated to each collection. And in that case, probably you'll be seeing the brighter blue. Okay, this is a small color difference that is important to mention. And actually, if I go here to the repository metadata, I saw that I'm not sure who created the, the metadata. It was, was it Mariana, Eli, Mari, Mariana, Mariana created? Okay. Um, and this, this metadata that they created here, I will, I will explain soon how to create, okay, calm down. <laughs> uh, these were, uh, will be inherited by every collection. So every collection will have this metadata here. And uh, just to make clear of this first concept. So you can see that once you create in any of these links, this whole page will go away and you'll be facing uh, two headers. There is a lateral menu, this first one, which again concerns repository level stuff. And once you go inside one of the collections, you'll see us another header. Now I'm gonna click in this collection, wallpapers, which is a collection that I just created. And 
I, I think I think we can we can actually go we can actually go by creating new collections so you don't get confused on how do we get there. Okay. So for creating a new collection, you only have to go here, new collection, and click new blank collection. All right. Uh, you have a form with the collection attributes. And by now, we really only have to worry about putting a name to it, something like my, uh, my books collection, I don't know. Uh, you can select here an image which will be displayed in the items page collection. I'm not gonna do this right now because I done in the other one. And another important feature that I like besides and uh, the image is also enabling some view modes. View modes are the ways that your items will be seen in the public, okay? So they can be a table, they can be uh, uh, a group of cards, small cards, they can be uh, a list of records, they can be a presentation slides. There are some different ways to display items. And I would suggest anyone who creates a collection uh, to just enable all of them and maybe choose one of them as default key. So again, uh, we don't have to cover all of these options right now. Let's just worry about setting a name in a description, all right? So I would just go here and click finish, but as I have already created my collection, the wallpapers collection, I'm gonna get and click on it. And now this is the wall, uh, this is the collections uh, page in the admin. What we have here? Well, we have per default our list of items. I've just created two items here. I'm going to create one soon, another one. Uh, we have our settings page, which is the same thing of the form that you've just saw where we created uh, the collection. Okay, so this is where we can change anything you did there before. And finally, we have the metadata page. Metadata, as I said, it's really important because it's basically what makes this uh, collection exist and what makes this collection make sense. The items of these collections will be described by the metadata that are listed here. And when you set up metadata, you are kind of creating the form that you will have to fill when you create an item in the collection, okay? so. Again, we have all those metadata that were inherited from the repository level metadata. I actually decided to disable them here. You can disable or enable metadata by clicking the switch. I decided to disable them just because I wanted a small form so we don't get you know, scared by the first uh, experiment and later we can just enable it without any problem. Uh, there will be always for every, every collection two metadata from the very start. Once you create a collection, you will see the title and the description, okay? Those are actually, uh, it's the WordPress way of doing it. You know, every uh, WordPress content needs to have a title and a description. You cannot remove them, but you can disable. But I would strongly recommend you to use them, particularly title, because some of the view modes that we will have uh, in the items list, tend to expect that you have at least a title for the item, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't need to be name title. You may use another name such as label, okay? So where, where would I do that? I could go here. I just click in the, in the pen. I'm not sure if you're able to see. Actually, I, I think I should apply a bit of zoom, right? Uh, my, my screen is, is a bit big. So I have this pen here, I just click edit. And here I have the metadata settings. So I don't like the use the term title and I prefer maybe label. That's okay, I can put it here. The description field of a metadata is useful for uh, helping the user understanding what is that you want is uh, this metadata to be. So here, when I pass my mouse, over the description tooltip, the help tooltip, I learned that the description may provide information on how to fill this metadata. So if I do a description for uh, this metadata, the user will actually uh, see a help tooltip just like this when creating an item. So let's just add an example. 
this is the wallpaper title or name something like that okay there are obviously other options here um, just keeping it short they they usually uh, are related to visualization so how we see this information is it a public is it a private information is it something that will always appear in the list is it something that you have to enable to see in the list okay is it obligatory you can have a metadata that it's obligatory or not and i'm just gonna hit save for now because uh, we don't have to go through all the details but you have here uh, other types of metadata that your content may have and this is really important because once you create your collection you are making the decision of uh, how will my item be composed and sometimes a bad choice can be hard to you know fix later uh, for example if you start using a text value and later you want to use a text area value because your text is not filling in the space of a small text area this you know can get complicated you have to go there and replace on every place so it's a good uh, practice to take a time uh, playing around with metadata options to make sure which one is the right for you so i'll just uh, go quickly uh, between them here we have text is just the basic text input field text area it's obviously a larger input field uh, date is for date inputs and this is uh, a complete date okay uh, if you if you are in a situation where your information that you you don't know the day for example but you only know the month in the year or maybe you're talking about something like centuries don't use this metadata okay this is for complete dates only if you uh, you probably be satisfied using a numeric input if you are talking about centuries and values like that which are more open and numeric input really obligates you to use number you won't be able to type in any uh, text input field here um and another detail that i can mention quickly is that some of these metadata will have uh, particular uh, settings okay uh, settings that are only for this this specific type so i created a numeric uh, metadata here that i named it score okay so this metadata uh, it has an option that it's the step options which means that i can say that this number will only increase one by one or maybe it will have decimal points you know or maybe it will have 0 0.0111 etc uh, and other metadata shall have that as well so i'm going to create here the next one that we have is a select box select box uh, is basically a select input where you have some options right so i i could I, I just drag it as you saw and drop it in there, but I can also just click and it will go to the end of the list, but then I would have to, you know, uh, drag it again to be in the order that I like. So this select box here, I'll just uh, say, I, I'm just going to tell about quality and I'm going to say, uh, is it a high? Opa. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the description. Is it a high? or low quality picture. And because I said high or low, I'm gonna give some options here. So uh, this is a setting particular to this metadata. I'm gonna say just high, and I can use enter to add a new one or low. I can even copy a list with a, uh, separated by comma, and it will, when once I paste here, it will, break the options okay and i can have uh one option that i forgot to mention in the in the previous form i can have multiple values this is not the kind that makes a lot of sense to have multiple values because obviously we're talking either high or low uh, but maybe for some other metadata you may have multiple values in the same metadata field okay so select box i added one here and now we have uh, a few more complicated ones. Um, I'm gonna add here the relationship one 
And the taxonomy one, which is probably the most important, I'm gonna leave it for after the, our first experiment, once you guys uh, be able to play a bit, because I, I think we, we could do a break so you don't you know, see a lot of stuff without putting your hands on something. So let's, let's leave taxonomy uh, for now. And I'm gonna use relationship. Relationship does matter. And I think we can do now. So a relationship, as you probably know, is a metadata that will relate this item to another item. If we had more collections, I could probably uh, make this relationship with another collection. But as we are really low right now, I'm going to start by relating it to this own collection. So I'm going to say that this wallpaper is related to this other wallpaper. And I made this by configuring here in the options of the metadata, configuring here that the collection is wallpapers. And metadata for search is also another important feature. This is where I say, when I go searching for the items that I want to relate, by what attribute I'm going to search that. So I may search by typing the name of the wallpaper, but maybe I want to search by typing, I don't know, the description of the wallpaper, OK? And by default, when I do this, I'm also saying that in the item, the information that I will see indicating that there is a relation will be the name, the title of the, the wallpaper. In this case, the label. I change it to label. But I can also display more things in a relationship. So I'll just select here thumbnail. Uh, and, and score so we can uh, see this in action. And these other two, fe this feature here, I'm going to leave it enabled to explain in the future, but it's a positive one thing too. Okay, so now we have uh, some basic metadata. Let's uh, create an item so we can see this metadata in action. I have already created two items here. Um, the metadata that I uh, check it as enable, uh, I'm sorry, the metadata that I check it as possible to be enabled are available here. So I can see them in the table, all right? So once I check at them, I can see, oh, okay, this is the here, the description is an aerial shot of a bit, et cetera, et cetera. And it has a score of 10, all right? Um, the view mode options that I was talking about in the collection settings is this small select here. Actually, in the admin side, you have some view modes and all of them are enabled by default. But in the public side, you see that it's a bit different. Um, and again, this is a table, but I could actually see this, for example, as a list of records. There we go. And instead of editing one of these uh, items that I've already created, I'm going to add a new one. So we go on add new item. And here is the item for, OK? This is probably the heart of all the process of documentation. It's where you do the most important part of it, which is to tell what is the item. So I'm going to give a name here of uh, waves. And I'm going to select a document. Remember, like the item is the document. So this is the the thing in, in a certain way. And I'm going to uh, open file. Again, it can be a URL to something external. But in this case, I'm going to upload a file. And I'm going to open my file explorer here and get a wallpaper. And that's, that's the one I want. And here, I'm sending this information to the cloud in the website. OK, so this is hosted in the server where the site is. There are some options here, which I'm not going to cover all of them. But one important one in particular. OK, my dog is it's really freaking out. He wants to go for a walk. No, not, not now. Not now. Uh, and maybe maybe it's, uh, it's, it would be good for uh, the dog to know that we are wrapping up. <laughs> so in the next minutes, oh, great to see. <laughs> Yeah, maybe she, maybe she can hang out with Leo here. Oh, and play together yeah. And we keep going with. <laughs> hey, take a look at it, 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 that from the other side of the world. <laughs> oh, so good to have some friends with us. Okay. <laughs> it, actually, it actually looks like him. 
A question. Uh, as we see, the time is coming to its end. Can we wrap up in the next minute so we can have a, yeah. some minutes yeah, yeah, and yeah. continue in the next uh, session tomorrow and continue with some questions? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I will. <laughs> I'm just going to publish one item so you can see this in action. Uh, just one small information that I think is important is the alt text. This is the information that will be seen by screen readers. Okay, so uh, people that have visual disabilities, if they visit your website, uh, they will probably see this image and then you, they will read whatever is written here. So I would say probably a picture of a of waves in the sea. All right. Let's file. This is our document. You can see that it automatically generated a thumbnail, which is a smaller version of the image that usually is the one that you see in the listings. All right. And again, I'm not going to do description now, but one important thing is that that description of the metadata that I put in the in the field it's now here. So this helps whenever, whoever is feeling this information to see what do they need to do. I'm going to give a score of seven and a quality of high. And now to make a relationship, uh, there is another picture of C here, the C. And you remember, I, I show that C, uh, the, the, the label in the score should be the metadata displayed in the relation. So now I can see them and I search here and it is set I can also see it here configured. Well, in, let's publish this. So, and our item is ready to go to the public. This is the administrative view. And tomorrow, uh, besides creating taxonomies, which are a much more um, rich way of organizing and categorizing your items, we will discuss a bit of presentation. We will discuss a bit of how we can tweak this visualization, which is the public view of the items list, how we can create filters. And finally, uh, what else can we display of information in the items page itself, which is the one that you're having public now. So my suggestion, uh, as, as we, we could cover very uh, basic topics only by now, is that if you have time, of course, um, to get inside the administrative panel, create collections for you, and maybe create items, maybe create metadata. Uh, I, sometimes people get, I mean, they are afraid of clicking on something that will destroy everything, you know, or, or I don't know, deleting everything. And, I mean, <laughs> sometimes people do weird stuff, but I, I believe if you just uh, play a bit with the concepts that we, we have shown now, you'll be able to get a taste of what is possible, and you'll probably face the first challenges, the first doubts will come out, so we probably can start tomorrow uh, with some doubts and some questions that you can, you know, uh, find out during this process, All right? No. And, and actually, if, if we have, we, does, do we still have those 15 minutes of questions? Because if, if anyone would like to, to bring it, maybe we can answer something now. I, I know we could, we, I, I said very, I mean, I, I covered just the <laughs> very beginning of it, but that's a bit how, how much I could. Mateus, thank you so much for this introductory presentation. Uh, it's a great presentation and it's fascinating to, um, to see all these in action. And actually, yes, we, we have uh, some minutes left since we started a little bit, um, yeah, uh, 10 minutes after. So maybe we have five minutes for some um, uh, first questions. And I see already Dimitris raised uh, his uh, hand. Dimitris. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mateos, for this very interesting introduction and for the very detailed instructions on how to import items and make collections. Uh, my question uh, is, is probably more, um, maybe you would anyway answer this question tomorrow, but I wanted to know something more about displaying items. 
uh, if there is a way to display a comparison between items, can you choose several items uh, and have them in a table and see their metadata in a, in a list and see, for example, what the difference on their colors or on their taxonomy or stuff like this? Or is it only able, uh, or are we only able to display specific items one by one? Thank you. Okay. Um... We can achieve something similar to that uh, when once we have better filters, okay? So you see that, for example, I'm just, I have a, a collection that is already filled with more images and stuff uh, here in my local installation. And here I could create some filters which allow me to uh, see these things. And if I use a view mode that displays metadata such as the table one, uh, then probably this kind of information can be achieved. Another way of doing this, and let me just apply one filter here so we can see, for example, I want to see all the uh, all the images that I decided to label as architecture. And if everything goes right. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So with this here, I can see the exact four items that have this metadata labeled as actor. And I can apply several of these and see what they have in common or not. Uh, another way of doing something like this would be using an advanced search, um, which is a bit different from filters because filters is usually, you have a list and you want to slow down your options. Advanced search is kind of, you begin with nothing and you say by which criteria you want to search for. So here I would select a metadata such as um, the grade, the score metadata. And I would say, I want to find uh, images with a score greater than five. And I, I can, you know, add more fields. I want to find any uh, that has the letter A in the description or that do not have the letter A, stuff like that. And this would, uh, this would give you also an items list, but uh, that answers only to those criteria, okay? And um, you can also, and I hope we can cover that uh, next, also next day. But we, you can also create a page and use some of the blocks. They are Gutenberg blocks, which I'll explain what they mean, but it's basically a selection of lists, a manual selection. And you can add, visually add them in your page and discuss things about them just by selecting them. And this selection, it can be either manually, but it can also be uh due to a filter so any of the filters that you have the, here you can use them to kind of export your items to a page and display them there and say hey these are the items that obey to these criteria uh, by these filters by these options etc cetera, etc cetera. okay i hope it, it had answered yeah thanks thanks for the answer Thank you, uh, Dimitris, and uh, thank you, Mateus, uh, for uh, the detailed explanation. I would add that um, based on what Dimitris asked, why are we supposed to do this? Uh, why we don't we just put information, put, for example, upload the images and just write some text um, next to the images and this can be enough. The reason why uh, there is the need of a repository, a digital repository, and what it brings is that um, other, other services, uh, for example, Europeana, which is the digital library of um, uh, Europe, which contains all this rich uh, cultural heritage, the way it um, gathers this information is through these kind of infrastructures, through digital infrastructures that can provide metadata on a structured uh, level. So what uh, we will eventually do with this is that we will provide the metadata that you can see on the document shared, which are um, maybe 10 fields which are required, maybe 
eight of them are required, maybe around eight and 10 of them are required fees in order for um, Europeana uh, to, um, to provide this uh, information, to gather this information in a way that can be uh, further shared. And also uh, based on what Dimitri says, uh, and maybe Mateus, uh, you can let us know if this can be possible through Tainacan, there should be a protocol where you can download uh, this information um, from the site, for example, and you want to put this into a CSV format, into a readable format where you can download all this data uh, together with uh, the metadata and gather all these metadata fields and have an overview of this uh, somehow. Would that be possible? Um, yeah, yeah, completely. Like what you're talking about, uh, it's really the principle of um, APIs and how they need to communicate with themselves. Uh, so one really important aspect of Tanaka is that when we, we create metadata, we do not force you to have a specific set of metadata because particularly many collections may have different ways of uh, making their documentation, right? But we allow uh, the collection of this information in a way that you can make a mapping to other, uh, to certain uh, patterns. So uh, I believe European and a lot of other repositories are deeply uh, use the Dublin Core standard, which is one of the many standards that we have around. And this luckily is already implemented by default on Tanakan because you can create one collection here in the new collection toggle. There is a Dublin core option, which is which, what it basically ma makes is it creates a collection, but it also creates the metadata. It prefills the metadata, the prefills, I'm not sure if that's right. It, it fills the metadata with the standard, okay? Uh, but besides that, even if you don't follow that standard, you can also go to mapping, and here you can say, hey, in my metadata, okay, the label will be the Dublin Core uh, contributor, the Dublin Core coverage, the Dublin Core date, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And this is the, because the Dublin Core is the one available for now officially by interface. Now I say officially by interface because uh, if you don't have any, uh, if your standard is another one, it's not very hard to develop, you know, this integration. We already have a Brazilian uh, museum standard that we implemented as a plugin, okay? And what does this mean? Once you have this mapping done, once you say, hey, in this standard, my name is that name, my date is that date, uh, you can go to the items list and you can click view as, and this will open, uh, several options for export. You can, for example, export in CSV, all right? And then you have CSV default, but you will also have CSV Dublin Core Mapper. So this one here, uh, I'm, I'm gonna use the default because I didn't make the mapping, but this one here uh, opens a CSV file, let me get this, that has exactly the data that is needed. Uh, for creating a integration, a migration between these platforms, okay? So that website that I mentioned that we aggregated data from different Brazilian museums, we used this standard here, the JSON standard. And basically uh, what it does is it fetches this data, which is the data of the metadata that we described it earlier, and it, uh, displays it in another Tainacan, uh, in, in this case is another Tainacan, but you could have, you could have uh, other, even other softwares, you know, and, and decide how to show this information. And that's why it's so important to, you know, take this effort of filling metadata with qualified fields and with all these details, because this allows you to make uh, a sort of protocol of communication that can be exchangeable and other platforms, maybe DSpace, maybe Islandora, maybe Atom, they will be able 
uh, to read this data and display in their own settings and vice versa. We can export information from their, uh, from their rep repositories if they obey this protocol. And this was a fascinating uh, finding, uh, Mateos, and thank you for explaining how we can really apply the FAIR principles, which is making this content findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, as we say in the course. So um, I think that uh, we, our time uh, has come for today, and uh, maybe uh, we can continue with uh, other questions tomorrow. So um, maybe for today, we will say goodbye. And thank you so much, uh, everyone. Thank you, Mateus. And um, uh, let's uh, see each other uh, tomorrow. All right, thank you all. And good luck. I hope you have time to maybe play a bit with it. If not, uh, we'll, we'll try to do more to tomorrow, OK? First step by step. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Bye. everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.